Well, it's not every day you get to drive a brand new Aston Martin. In fact, it doesn't come along even every decade. But this, the new DB11, is the epitome of what you could call all new. It is the car that marks the beginning of the second century for the British sports car brand. The DB11 also pioneers a new styling direction for Aston, trading the classic simplicity of its predecessors for more dramatic detailing on its sculpted body. One that takes inspiration from the 177 supercar. It even has an F1 style blown rear wing, which cleverly channels air from within the C pillars, passing through the boot and then pressurised to exit from an outlet in the trailing edge of the boot lid. Aston claims it significantly increases downforce without any penalties in drag, or ruining its sleek appearance. Now some car makers take a bit of poetic license with that all new phrase. Some are literally just visual makeovers or new engines and upgrades of some basic systems. For Aston Martin, it's been a long time coming for an all new car. And this DB11 is ground up all new. For starters, the whole chassis, the underpinnings of the car are all new. It still has all the same bonded aluminium, lightweight architecture that they've been building on the foundations for the, for the last decade or so. But this car is lighter, stiffer, bigger, wider, it's an all new car in every dimension. With that comes more interior space, better handling, better suspension and dynamics. More importantly, there are also the latest creature comforts coming from Aston's partnership with Daimler, the parent company of Mercedes-Benz. The German brand owns 5% of Aston Martin and in exchange for that, it gives the British car maker its electrical architecture system. So what we're seeing here now is a little bit of infiltration of that Mercedes-Benz. The tablet screen at the top with the sat-nav and the multimedia system is hugely more modern than the Aston Martin system of before. And it comes straight from the Mercedes-Benz, as does the air conditioning, the radio, the rotary controller that controls that multimedia system, even the indicator switches and basic things like that. And it really does lift not only the ambience of the car, but that everyday usability. As before, the DB series, this is a genuine two plus two coupe rather than a four seater. Uh, while there's not a lot of space back there, I'm sure your mates will put up with it for a ride in this car. Under its long bonnet resides an all new, smaller capacity 5.2 litre V12 engine that not only introduces turbocharging to the brand, but brings modern fuel saving measures such as cylinder deactivation and stop start. Despite its smaller size, it produces higher outputs than before with a maximum of 447 kilowatts and 700 newton meters on tap, which is enough to slingshot it from zero to 100 kilometers an hour in just 3.9 seconds. As for how it drives, there's also a vast improvement in the quality of the character of this car. It is a genuine Grand Tour. It loves long flowing country roads. The steering is really sharp and quite precise. It is a big car and you feel it on these narrow Italian lanes, but it never feels intimidating in that way either. Agile, it feels a lot lighter and a lot smaller and it sort of wraps around you and shrinks as you tuck it into the corners. The eight speed automatic gearbox is relatively smooth. There's a few jerky shifts every now and then, which is probably something that needs to be ironed out for those you know, super luxury customers that they would expect a little bit more from that. But there are no complaints with that V12 engine up the front. Where the big six litre naturally aspirated V12 that it replaces needed to be really worked hard. It was like a sewing machine in the way that it operated, but the torque and the peak powers didn't arrive until high up in the rev range. With this, you literally stand on it and it just opens up with this huge surge of pulling power. Despite its turbocharged nature, there's very little in the way of lag when you're in particularly the Sport and Sport Plus modes. And it has this really nice growly V12 engine sound about it as well. It's kind of a car with multiple characters. It's a great Grand Tourer, loving a long legged country road stretch. It's effortless, it rides beautifully over the bumps. There's a little bit of noise as it patters over some of the high frequency modulations in the road, but... And listen to that. Certainly not shy in horsepower. The DB11 will cost from $395,000 when the first models arrive in Australian showrooms just before the end of 2016. Well, it's been 12 years since the DB9 to the DB11. 
but it feels like a significant generational leap ahead. This car not only kickstarts the second century for the British brand, it brings it into the 21st century.